Morning folks, getting ready to launch here on the Susquehanna. It is early February. Uh, we had ice on this river pretty much 90% coverage three days ago. And uh, it's loosened up. We don't have ice now except for a couple pockets on the bank. And um, let's take a look at the rig I'm using and then we're gonna get out there and on the way to the first spot, talk about how winter fishing helps us become better anglers throughout the year and most of it has to do with the mental game of fishing let's take a look at the boat we got the ultralight 1103 i got one two batteries today i don't think i'm going to use them all but it's nice to have that range um, the bonafide rvr 119 um, I've fully rigged it out and you can check out that that uh, series of, of install videos. I think there's 16 of them in total uh, that covers everything from the navigation lights we have here to the active target that I'll have there. I got my transducer. I'm going to use that a little bit today in, in the scout mode. Um, dual anchor wizards on both sides the, the uh, I didn't I don't have the landing gear wheels on here because I was able to just bring it right to this ramp so I left them off but it has the boondocks landing gear obviously the kayak cushions total tractors foot control steering paddle uh, paddle pouch the um, the pod here is interesting uh, that's a false bottom. It's actually um, got closed cell phone block there that allows, if there's collision, you know, on that transducer, it just slides up in the water. So there's more. You can check it out on the, uh, the RVR build. I'm gonna grab my leverage landing net, put that back in the boat. And, uh, we're gonna head upstream, talk about mental things. So I've talked about the, the concept of positive mental attitude and how that helps you have excellent focus on your presentation. You know, the ability to, to pay attention to, you know, to, in this case, it's gonna be a, a jig bite on the bottom. After many hours of not getting a bite, being on point enough so you feel that that funny little it wasn't really a hit it just feels different need to set the hook you gotta focus you gotta have that mental focus um, over many hours even when nothing has happened and how you get to that point is is through through practicing through coming out here in winter and doing it well if you're only doing it for having fun out here in December, January, February, early March, um, you're, you're kind of missing the bigger picture of what the advantage of fishing in winter does for you year round. I see this every year when I, I take somebody and take someone under my wing and say, all right, let's, let's get you out here. Let's get you catching some in the winter. Uh, and the benefit when somebody does it, when somebody winter fishes for the first time, you know, over the course of, of a winter, and just, you know, starts catching more fish year round. I think it's taken me about 22 years since someone took me under their wing and took me out here winter fishing to figure it out. And it's all mental. It's not, and I've tried teaching the mechanics of jig fishing or you gotta use this bait or you gotta hone in on this type of, of pool. Uh, all of that's good information, 
but it's useless without positive mental attitude. So let's take a look at the two ways of thinking about my trip today. The positive mental attitude way and the nagging doubt negative. You'll see the other way. Okay, here goes. Man, it's cold. Why the hell am I out here? Why did I, I drive, you know, over two hours to get up here, to come up here and not catch a damn fish? Why? Because it's fun? Because <laughs> you're gonna do it. Like, you're gonna catch fish. You've caught hit fish in the winter before, and uh, man, there's nothing like the feeling of feeling that jig thump when you haven't felt anything in a while and it goes thunk and you set the hook and you just feel that lean and, and you know yeah that's a solid fish that's worth doing yeah but, but you did that three days ago and didn't feel that that bite like you came out here where there's 90 percent ice coverage and you got skunked why do you want to endure that again what what is good about that yeah, I mean, it was a it was a tough bite the other day, but since then, you know, we've had a had three days of, of warming air temperatures. The ice is gone, and uh, it's it's absolutely going to happen today. You're going to whack them. No, you're not. Like, it, it, yeah, the ice is gone, but seriously, you're you're big deal. You're dealing with 33 degree water, maybe 34, like. They're not gonna bite in that. <laughs> yeah, so here's some facts. A, you've caught them in winter in the water this cold before. You, I think the coldest you've caught them is 32.4 degrees. It's been a few years since you've done that. But the other thing, people catch them through the ice all the time. Like reservoir smallmouth fishing, you know, that's cold water. Uh, if they're gonna eat in that, why wouldn't they eat in this warming trend? Besides trend is more important than temperature as it's coming up you know say it is 34 degree water it just came up from 32 you know i would take 34 degree water on the way up from 32 more than i would take 36 degree water on the way down from 38. all right so trend is a thing um eh. You know what else is a thing? The fact that you're going to a spot that you've never caught them in, in winter. Like, why would you bother? Like, you should have gone to the confluence. You should have gone to any number of other places that, uh, you know, that you know that there are fish. Scouting in the middle of winter? Are you kidding? You don't even know there's fish there. What are you doing? I have so been looking forward to, to hitting this spot. I, I scouted it last um, October time frame, and man, it just looks good. Besides, you're good at this. Like, you've proven on water you've never seen. You actually did it back in December in, in three different places uh, in Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee. You hit winter water, sight unseen, one of which you were driving by and said, that, that is it, and you were right. You know what good water good winter water looks like and you're going to some now you're going to catch fish it, yeah doubt it uh highly doubt you're gonna catch anything like this is a waste of time and if you don't get a bite you know within the first two hours you should just pack it up and go home you know your time is better spent uh you know sitting at home on the couch tying more hair jigs getting ready for when it's actually going to be worth fishing up here it's totally worth fishing here today. This warming trend, this spot, is, is why you took a vacation day to come out here and fish in February. Because you may only get two or three or four bites all day, but they're gonna be the biggest fish of the year. Those big fish have to eat by, by virtue of their, their body mass, their bigger animals. They don't stop eating. They have to sustain that body. And furthermore, we have photo period growing. That means that the days are getting longer. These fish know, I gotta pack on the pounds. I'm gonna spawn in a few months. I gotta get fat and strong because spawning is difficult. So yeah, they're totally gonna eat today. Nope. 
you're an idiot. You should have stayed home. Look, there's ice right there. This water hasn't warmed up that much. Look at that. Big old plate of ice. Check that out. What are you doing? Why are you out here when there's ice? You're an idiot. Just go home. Not a chance. Yeah, I just did hit some ice. Uh, not a chance of going home. I'm excited to be here. I'm happy to be out here, even if there is ice. Here's another chunk. Let me ram into it. Ready, set. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They're going to eat. All right, so as I'm cruising up, I'm just tying a leader on, and I'm going to tie on some pretty small baits, but let's talk a little bit about which of those two anglers do you think is more likely to catch fish? I mean, it, it should be obvious, right? Your fishing in winter helps, helps you fight the one that's negative. Fight that part of your brain. Squash that, that nagging doubt, shut it down, and then cultivate and actively think through the reasons why they are going to bite. Uh, that's, that's really the heavy lifting that we do in winter. We get stronger, positive mental attitude muscles, if you will, when we fish, when it is difficult to catch fish. It's that simple. That's why winter fishing makes us better anglers year round. We handle adversity a lot better. When things get tough, we keep trying. We have that grit, that determination, and we honestly enjoy fishing more with positive mental attitude. You got to work at it though. This is uh, the best time of year to work on it. So to be fair and honest, uh, this first spot I'm stopping at is a place that I've caught them at in winter and it does help boost your confidence a little bit to to just get get one in the boat in a place that you know there are going to be fish. Now, I'm going really small with this uh, Z-Man Tiny Ticklers. These little, uh, I don't know, they're just tiny ticklers. I got a green pumpkin, I got it on a, I think it's a 16th ounce um, football head with a little bristle guard and a very small um, hook. It's an owner 5318. I made this on a do-it mold. But I'm gonna put this on there, slathered up with some scent, and uh, you know, in winter, up here on the Susquehanna, they eat small. They really do. If they really get going, I'll I'll tie some uh, some bigger profiles, some bigger craw profiles on. But the starting point of of this little guy, and I gotta I gotta spread that bristle guard out, uh, is is a good you know good first first uh, thing to throw at them. See if you can get them to eat that small stuff. So I got that little tiny ticklers out there and because there isn't wind uh, I can actually feel the bottom with not a long cast but a short one. Um, it's it's a big calm eddy. You know there's an obstruction upstream grass bed starts there it's finite I can pick this apart and totally see all right I'm working the end you know the downstream part uh, I'll work the middle and work work my up to the top and kind of feel what I want to feel is am I on a hard bottom and right now I move it I can feel because I have a really sensitive rod the St. Croix legend extreme I can feel that little scratching on bottom knowing that yeah I, I uh, I'm not on muck, so uh, I also put my um, active target sonar in. I have it in scout mode, and really all I'm looking for as I pan left and right is is motion. And you got to get your boat stopped for it to make any sense. If you're drifting, I, it's just really hard to, to see much of anything. I'm gonna cast all the way to the end of that. Sometimes they're in that taper up before it takes off again. Um, it's a good spot. All right, 
nothing like this back corner of the eddy. I'm just bringing my anchor up. I'm gonna plunk myself right in the middle of it. Shorter casts uh, really, really can help you feel the bite better. And I ease in here. And then again, quietly let that anchor down. A little bit at a time. It's clear water. I think the middle is kind of mucky. I'm looking at it. I can see the leaves. I see some rocks down there, but there's the center of this eddy is probably not the best. Uh, but if I move towards the top, I bet you have a clean bottom and totally still totally still current. I'm going to go ahead and pan around with this forward facing. See if I see any motion. Alright, I've spent about a half hour on this on this big eddy and I've worked starting at the bottom pretty thoroughly, the middle more thoroughly, and I've touched some of the top. Um, it's not such a big eddy that I think I would have missed fish by you know the half hour of quality presentations that tiny ticklers on a hard bottom um, in spots where the foam is just sitting still. Um, so I think if there were a concentration of fish here, I'd have found them. It's time to move on to the next one. Everyone always wants to know, hey, how long do you give it? There's no rule, but longer than most people would think. Um, there, there are pools or, or areas that can load up with fish when fish are active and there are areas that I think they go when they're they're pretty passive and there could be some fish in here that are just not ready to eat yet um, but they could activate later in the day and uh, you know you get one of those flurries of, of uh, five or six hits inside a, inside a half hour if that's happening don't move thoroughly fish it enjoy it but uh, it's not happening right now right here so moving on so maintaining positive mental attitude which by the way I haven't had any bites and I think I've been out here two hours um, it, it even drills down to small decisions you make small adjustments it's important that you make them with the framework of a positive uh, instead of negative. I haven't had any bites on the tiny ticklers. I could say, this bait sucks. I don't use that. I'm gonna use something different. Or I could say, I think I might get a few more bites if I put the smaller scented jerk shad, because it's it's got the glitter on it. It's gonna pivot on the bottom, it's gonna flash. So it might bring them over from a little further away than the tiny ticklers. I might get a few more bites with this. So it's a subtle difference. Um, hey, that's the wrong bait. Or, or hey, there's a better bait. You know, it's, it's a tiny difference, but it leads you, in, you know, to a situation where you say, I'm about to get bit on this, as opposed to, Man, I didn't get bit on that. Tiny, tiny difference. But it, it makes a difference. Incidentally, I have not seen any fish movement on this. Or do I want to say I haven't seen any fish movement on this yet? Again, small differences in how you're thinking lead you to positive mental attitude leads you to better focus. I want to show you something. This is the cool stuff you see in winter. They eat this. Look at all those stonefly larvae. 
coming right up next to the boat. I think they're moving towards it to, uh, to climb up onto it and hatch. Like, here's, I good, it has hatched. But they eat these so many at a time. A little wiggling. Let's get one of these. Come on. That one has not hatched yet. They eat the heck out of those all winter. I will put a Z Man larvas on a little hook under a bobber at some point. But I'm just working this uh, this big sunny flat. It's shallow. Um, a lot of deep water below. It's somewhere that I think they could could absolutely pull up on and just look for well, eat these things, man. So many of them. They're everywhere so much food it's a lot of little bites but they eat them i mean i know they eat them because i catch them and they got them all in their mouth like pepper i mean just lots of little dots inside their white mouth all right not real strong signals but i think i see fish out there moving around and yeah that's those are fish I look at where this is pointed and it's sort of out in this direction so that's where I'm gonna fish. I had to stare at it a while and be like is that what I'm looking at? Am I just kind of swinging in the wind? No these are fish. I got them in front of me. They're moving around. They're out in this eddy. They pulled up on this flat. That's so cool. Okay, I get to sit here and show you better images of what it looks like but I I just want to catch them all right I have to constantly pan back into where they are because they're they're moving there's a current seam here and they move across that way and then I saw them move back all right I think I found a pot of carp and I can see mud plumes out on in the direction of that current scene there. Um, I don't know if that's going to show up on camera at all, but they're mucking it up. And what we're looking at here, uh, let's see some movement on this side. Let me pan around and see if I can pick them up. Each of those dark, yeah. See these right here? They're they're moving slowly. I gotta keep panning to keep them in frame. But you gotta watch it a while to to actually see them. For whatever reason, I'm not getting a good return out here. But on these edges, I'm getting you know I'm able to see that movement 25 feet out. Oh, there they come through the middle. See these? They're just starting to show up. So, pretty big fish to be showing up on here. I don't think that my signal is as strong as it was when I first set this up. And I think that I changed from two 23 amp hours, one solely for the, the active target and one for everything else. I say everything else, but you know, the, the rest of the depth finder. That gave me a better image than this, so I may switch back to two batteries instead of that, that single 54 amp hour. We'll see. But I am able to, you know, to see there they come through again, these fish. And that helps to look at something big and obvious like carp to, to study what you're looking at. And really you're training your eyes for the motion, which they're all over this. Um, not a real great signal or image. I got some tweaking to do with my electronics, but I'm learning stuff and that's 
that's good. I'll switch the single 54 for separate 23 and get back to the really good, I had good image, you know, back in the spring. So I am going to keep throwing in here on these carp because there could be some smallmouth mixed in. They, they tend to hang out with the carp and eat whatever the carp kick up. You know, I'll drag a jig through there for a while. And then um, this is new water for me figuring out in winter. I've left the places that I, that I know uh, where they're fish and didn't catch any yet. I may come back to them late in the day, but I do want to explore. Um, I have a destination in mind, but this was a little pit stop on the way, which proved to be interesting, at least for the active target practice. That was a freaking muskie, man. Ah, oh, I just missed a muskie. Damn. I just had a muskie get off. Well, there are fish here. This eddy looks pretty still. It's a little bit of a swirl to it. And uh, look at the depth. Yeah, it's about six feet. Still got its some of its ice left. Look for motion. You see it? There's some right there. Come in towards the source and you can see the fish. It's moving to the left. It's about eight feet away from me. See him? So that's all you do with this. You look at the things that are still and you ignore them. And then you look at the things that are moving and they don't move a lot in winter, but that dude's cruising around. There is a fish in this eddy. I only see one, but I do see movement. Don't know what he is. Is he a catfish? Musky, bass, carp. Where's the motion? It's in there. You really look for shadows and that black blob right there has a fish right in front of it on the bottom and he doesn't move fast but you watch him for a period of time he is moving sometimes he moves faster sometimes slower there's two of them I see two shadows they're following each other and they are yeah, almost underneath me. They're like right, right here. Doesn't mean they're going to eat. So, for sure, with the active target, I saw three fish, two of them right here. Towards the end of that that big long comp pocket, one up at the top, and uh, you know it it adds a new element of of understanding where they are in winter. Like to have that confirmation before the only confirmation you really had was you put a jig in there and they thumped it. I didn't get thumped in there, but I do know there are at least three fish, and they're right where they should be, in in that area where, you know, there's there's swirling water next to it, but right underneath it, totally still foam, 
they move back and forth underneath it slowly, uh, but it still has a hard bottom. So I'm gonna keep moving down, see if I can find some new spots. We got a nice big uh, big point that swings out here. I think it's a gravel dump from a creek that's right behind me. Uh, they push current way out, and uh, you get some nice calm water beneath it. I'll give this next one in line a try. Yep, there's the there's the creek. Dumps out that gravel point, and uh, on the back side of it, calm water. Hope it's deep. If it's deep, it might be a good spot. So each time I pull into a new eddy, I feel it's critical to to lower both anchors, front and back, balance stern. Because if the wind is swinging you and on the active target, you just see everything panning across, right? Whatever motion is in there gets lost. It's not until I get stopped, which you want to do anyways, because you know, when you're, when you're fishing a jig slow in the bottom, you don't want any slack in the line like swinging towards it, which makes your line kind of relax. Um, but for seeing what's going on here, and there's a lot of fish here. I, I think it's another pot of carp, but there's going to be some, uh, some bass mixed in there. Um, but you just, you don't see them until they're, until you're stopped. I got a bunch of them. So I look at where it's pointed. They're all sort of that direction. Where's the motion? Do you see it? You gotta see that. Disappear. He went right through the bottom of the screen. And he stopped. When they stop, you don't see him. When they move again, you see him. Alright. First pull I've had all day. Stickfish. Actually. Second, first was that musky. There's a shadow and a fish. Fish and then shadow. Every dark spot is a fish shadow. See the shadow move? Come back and find the light spot that is the fish. These are big shadows. I think they are carp. There are smaller ones mixed in. I think the smaller ones are smallmouth. So I did have to turn up my contrast to 88% to really get get these images. Too much of the uh, the middle was just dark, like nothing showing up. I get motion out there, you know, further out, but the best images obviously are right right here in front of me. And I'm really just using it to tell me, yeah, are there are there fish in here and 
There are. They're carp. But there's a couple smallmouth mixed in. So I dropped the next eddy down in, uh, it looks, you know, it looks still. You got some of that foam, it's just, looks like it's sitting, but it's actually swirling. And, you know, I've been looking and I'm just not seeing the motion that I did. There might be some fish further up there, but, you know, it, it goes with what I already know that when you have a, you know, the foam bubbles in leaves just kind of traveling along like that, it's not still water. It, you know, they don't want to work. You know, current's like a breeze to them, and when it's 33 degrees out and the breeze is blowing, you, you step out of the breeze. So I'm going to, actually I might run back up to that top part and uh, just scan it real quick. I will say that when, you know, you really want to study an area and see, hey, are there are there fish in there? Uh, it helps to get stopped. But if there's a whole herd of fish that you've just spooked, you can see it. So let's take a look as we, we head up towards this top of this eddy. I want to kind of slow it down a little bit. Yeah, it's still hard to read it. You know, if there was a fish in there moving slowly because everything is sort of passing by this way as we advanced up. You're just, you're gonna miss it. But, if there's a whole bunch of them and you've spooked them, yeah, you do see that. I think that's just stuff drifting with the current. These little dots that are moving to the right. <laughs> I'm gonna put a jig up there anyways. Um, we are running running low on daylight. <clears throat> Still haven't caught a bass. It's okay. We keep trying. So I think the smart play at this point is to get back over to the same side that I uh, I parked on. Just get close as the sun gets down. Uh, I'm less familiar with this area of the river. So if something goes wrong, I at least want to be on the right side of the bank to uh, take care of things as it start, you know, starting to get dark. But yeah, still got plenty of juice on the, uh, the first torpedo battery, 62%. I can probably really mash it and get upstream and uh, save some time for a couple of those familiar holes close to the launch. All right, um, I got less than half an hour of daylight left. Got a couple spots here before I um, head back to the launch. Haven't caught a bass yet, not giving up, um, keeping my chin up, looking at this foam thinking, that looks right. Let me put my transducer in, we'll take a look and uh, see if I can catch one in the, uh, the uh, I don't know, bottom of the ninth. So nice, nice eddy current seam on this side, another one there. Right in the middle we got foam that's eh, it's swirling a little bit, but right out in front of me it's sitting still. So let's take a look, see if we got anyone moving around in there. I have not anchored up, so I'm, I'm drifting a little bit, but uh, don't see anyone yet. All right. Soaked a jig for five minutes. Uh, I think I did see one on a current seam once. I just didn't get them to eat. Let's move to the next one. Racing that sun disappearing. <laughs> Still have to give good quality presentation. I know at the end we want to hurry up and hit as many spots as we can. Um, Quality presentations in whatever place that we choose to fish are, are pretty important. You know, if you're only giving it 17 seconds when you know that it's going to take two, three minutes for them to eat the jig, give them the full 
three minutes. Let it sit. All right, here's the next one. Not up at the bridge piling. Not there, that's pretty swirly. But back a little bit. This little pocket here is, uh, let's check the depth. Um, yeah, we're six feet. And, uh, huh. Now that I'm on top of it, I'm assessing and saying, no, nope, it's moving through there. Might have to go to the next one. So I'm scanning it. I got no motion. It's probably because this eddy is the most obvious one up here and it gets pounded and those fish have said, nah, we just won't hang out there anymore. Oh well, it's worth a shot. One more spot. One more spot. All right, sun is down, it's pretty much dark, and uh, man, I hate the skunk. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. But, as much as I hate it, I never use it as a reason to not go next time. If you never know the skunk, you're probably not trying when it's difficult. And when you're not trying to catch fish when it's difficult, like 33 degrees and you know, spots that you hadn't really figured out yet. You're not growing, you know. When you, when you fish in difficult conditions, you develop positive mental attitude, endurance of focus, and, uh, and you learn stuff. I for sure learned stuff today using the active target. Um, stuff that's really going to come into play big time as we move into uh, late winter, early spring, man, this thing is useful. It's really useful to pull into a spot. If the fish are moving around, you can tell right away, yeah, they're there. Um, found two spots that I had never fished in the winter that do hold fish. I just couldn't get them to bite. I would never say it's not worth coming you know, it wasn't worth the trip when it's a skunk. You always learn something and you always get mentally tougher as an angler when you endure the skunk. Thanks for watching.